All right, I'm going to talk on the behalf of uh, Christophe Guinet. Uh, uh, he would have loved to come, actually. He's a researcher has been uh, involved in the depredation issue of the French uh, islands for uh, many years now. He's the one who implemented all the programs on depredation. He's what's actually my uh, PhD supervisor. And um, he's uh, right now uh, trying to uh, gather different fundings uh, to uh, be running uh, the next uh, steps uh, of depredation uh, research, and uh, this is what he called the Oka Depred project. And I'm going to make a short presentation of uh, what will be the next steps uh, for that kind of research. Um, so the main uh, goal uh, of the Oka Depred is uh, still to investigate and propose operational and technological solutions to uh, the depredation issue. And uh, he actually divided the project into four. Uh, main parts. Uh, the first one is to keep uh, increasing our knowledge on uh, the natural feeding interaction behaviors of killer whales and sperm whales with the fishery. The second one is about assessing uh, the direct and indirect cost uh, of uh, uh, avoiding the whales. This is what we've been talking about earlier this afternoon. Uh, the second one is more about acoustics, so that will be the first time we implement an acoustic research uh, of the Crozet and Kerguelen Island. And the idea is to find what are the features, uh, the acoustic features of vessels and fishing practices uh, that can actually reduce depredation. And the third one is to implement a technical, technological approach to suppress depredation uh, and to use experimental fish protection devices online and other uh, aspects that I'm going to talk to you about. So about the first question uh, the project is going to address, um, the first uh, sub-question is to assess the distribution of, uh, and the foraging activity of those uh, whales in presence and in absence of uh, fishing activity. Uh, that is one big question we are all trying to address. Um, the Alaskans have uh, started to get some interesting findings with uh, the tagging uh, programs they, they've been running. Um, are the sperm whales, killer whales naturally present on the fishing grounds, or are they actually looking uh, for uh, fishing boats uh, on those areas? Um, do they change the diving behavior in absence uh, or during fishing activity? And uh, the tools that are going to be used for that uh, questions will be photo identification first, this long-term data set we have, and mainly uh, the data with our satellite tags. So we're going to try uh, to uh, uh, get some tracking information on those uh, whales, both killer whales and sperm whales. Um, the third approach uh, is going to implement is an acoustic approach using uh, a vertical system, and the fourth one will be an experimental fishing line. So about the uh, tracking data, uh, the idea is to uh, primarily uh, tag sperm whales. They are much easier to uh, to equip with that kind of gear, uh, especially down the Crozet Island. Um, they're going to try to uh, do that on the killer whales as well, but the priority will be on sperm whales. And the idea is to get locations, just like Jen uh, has showed, uh, and also getting data on the dive and acceleration information. So acceleration gives you an idea of uh, when the sperm whale is actually uh, capturing something. Uh, so. Th that kind of information now is available through uh, new systems uh, of tags that will uh, combine all those uh, information, all these uh, sensors of dive, acceleration, and uh, movements. Um, that is a description of the uh, vertical uh, acoustic array. Uh, the idea is to uh, deploy those uh, on the long line uh, with four different hydrophones. And, uh, a student that is right now starting a PhD with Christoph has been looking at that, uh, has been modeling the data uh, from uh, dummy variables. And the idea is to, um, to actually localize uh, the whale into the three dimension uh, aspect. So using different hydrophones, you can actually know at what depth the sperm whale or the killer whale is going to interact with your long line. So the idea is to know if sperm whales, for example, are actually depredating during soaking, for example, or are they like killer whales, what we assume with killer whales, just waiting for the holding to, uh, to be going on. And this, uh, those hydrophones will be also used to record the vessel's acoustic signatures. 
Um, in Alaska, uh, they've showed that the whales are especially sensitive to some specific cues, uh, acoustic cues that will attract uh, the, 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 that will attract them to the uh, to the vessels. The idea here is to uh, do the same thing, uh, try to analyze those specific cues that can be produced by vessels, but also to get an idea of uh, uh, are there some vessels that are more easily detectable than others. Um, the experimental fishing line will be a, a, a 800 section of an experimental line inserted within a real fishing line, and the idea is to put accelerometers uh, on some of the uh, hooks line. Um, with this information, uh, we'll be able to uh, have data on when does a fish is going to uh, uh, go on the hook, grab the bait. Uh, so that is very useful information, fighting on the line, setting down and detection of depredation events. So the idea is to get information on when depredation takes place uh, that during fishing or hauling operations, and then to test anti-depredation devices. Um, so the outcomes for that first part would be to develop the avoidance strategy, uh, the, to know better about the fish behavior around the fishing line, what time, when, uh, and uh, how do they uh, get on the, on the line, and all sperm whales and killer whales only interacting with the line during holding or uh, during soaking as well. And this will be critical to assess the potential efficiency of depredation mitigation techniques tested as part of the other uh, parts of the project. So this is part two. Um, it's a similar uh, protocol we're gonna follow than the one uh, Megan has been using. It's to assess the direct and indirect uh, economic losses due to depredation. Um, so the idea is to uh, have an assessment of the cost associated with your operational recommendations, uh, the one I've been presenting to you, uh, having a greater holding speed, uh, using shorter lines depending on the depth, uh, it can take you more time to retrieve your lines, uh, and uh, the movements of vessels to avoid the whales. So the idea is to combine all those information into a global uh, economic assessment. And from this, we're hoping to improve this operational approach and to uh, go further into the recommendations we're giving to the fishing industry. Uh, third part, the vessel acoustic features and fishing practices. Uh, we started from a, a pretty uh, obvious example. Uh, when looking at the data, we saw those great variations between the vessels in terms of interactions uh, with the kilo whales and the sperm whales. Um, so, Part of those variations might be due to uh, uh, different ways of using those vessels, but it can also be uh, caused by different acoustic features of those vessels. Uh, as I say, there might be some vessels that are more uh, attractive uh, for whales than others. And this information will actually be critically important to guide the fishing companies in their strategic choices. Uh, do we have to train the fishing captains or is there a need for technical modification of the vessels to make them less detectable? Um, so, yeah, we're going to use the acoustic signature, the noise level uh, that is produced during, especially during holding operation. Uh, and to do that, we're going to use the same hydrophones. And then I mentioned that uh, in uh, my uh, previous talks yesterday, uh, we, instead of looking at the vessel level, we started to look at the issue at the captain level. And uh, this is an example of what is going on for the same vessel. You get differences between captains in terms of uh, uh, probability of having killer whales or not. And um, this analysis uh, led us to uh, try to understand what makes some captain more vulnerable than others. Uh, is this the sound level generating during fishing operation or is it just the fishing strategies? All right, the fourth part will be about technological approach to suppress depredation. A new fishing method, experimental fish protection devices on the line, and uh, it, it, it was actually part of the uh, last call to meeting where uh, we've been exchanging with the two uh, fishing gear supply companies uh, about, yeah, the future of that kind of research, and we are actually hoping to collaborate uh, with the gear suppliers. 
Uh, the objective is to develop something to protect the fish on the line or during hauling operation without harming the cetaceans. Uh, to do that, it's to implement the non weaver policy. We want to reduce the super cetacean motivation to enter with the fishery. And the test would be performed uh, of the Crozet Island. Uh, the first tests that were about the acoustic repellent, as I showed yesterday, uh, were limited efficacy about repelling the whales. We clearly showed uh, a habituation process that was with the previous versions of the orca saver. And the fish traps were also tested, that was back in 2010, um, uh, around the Crozet Island. There was a specific uh, trip that was dedicated to uh, testing pots uh, around the Crozet Islands. And those spots showed limited efficacy. Um, they did suppress depredation and they did uh, limit the bycatch of seabirds, but uh, the, the yield was not great enough to uh, be sustainable. These are the few pictures of all the pots that were tested during that survey. Um, it was actually in collaboration with different institutes uh, from France uh, and all those people and Nicolas Ries were aboard this vessel. They all tested different models of pots and trying to know which one was the best in terms of uh, uh, catch rate. I'm not going to go into details here. This has been already uh, presented. This is to give you an idea that uh, most of the pots, I mean, actually all of them, uh, did not reach the economic threshold that is uh, needed to uh, uh, get a, a viable uh, fishing activity around the Crozet Island. Um, plus, there were some uh, additional issues, such as the big bycatch of the crabs. Um, uh, the catch was biased towards big individuals, especially big females to fish. Uh, and there were some also uh, issues with the safety of the crew uh, using those boats aboard uh, the big vessels. Uh, so now, from this first experiment, um, the idea was to get an extensive review of the literature from previous experiences uh, worldwide, but also in the franchise uh, to develop new technological approaches uh, to reduce depredation. Um, so we had a number of meetings uh, with the fishing companies, captain, the industry, uh, to talk about those uh, different approaches. And um, what we want to do is to develop prototypes and test them at sea with the collaboration of the fishing industry uh, to assess the performances. I mean make some real at sea uh, conditions, trials of those te uh, technological system. Um, that was the very first idea and uh, uh, object that was developed by Fishkeven, the SAGO system. Uh, this is actually what needs to be improved because you see that's pretty big and uh, that was eventually abandoned. The idea is to develop something that is uh, called the fish collector. It's uh, uh, maybe a system that would go through the line, pretty much like the Cachalotera, but still using the auto line system with those single hooks. Um, and to maybe not protect all fish, but at least part of it. So, um, yeah, the whole project is actually based on a uh, big collaboration. Uh, that is first local collaboration. We are uh, invo including all the fishing companies plus uh, the managers from the National Museum of History. And uh, what we're aiming to do is to also involve international uh, stakeholders and uh, like most of you that are here uh, today at the workshop, uh, the idea is to go all together. So uh, Christophe managed to get already some funding from uh, the fishing industry, uh, the French fishing industry. They're going to uh, pay, for example, for the uh, acoustic devices. Um, and then he's still looking uh, for other fundings to, uh, uh, to, uh, to complete the different aspects of the project. Uh, we are hoping, I mean, Christophe is hoping actually to get a, a response uh, for, for, for that project by July. And if it's positive, uh, this project will be started next year. All right, thank you very much.